Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. In this video, we're going to take a look at the this reference in Kotlin. This is a really important subject to understand, especially when you're dealing with constructors. And it's something that beginners often find intimidating because it seems really obscure and abstract. But I hope to show you that it's really not that complicated. I'm going to start by creating a new Kotlin class in the source folder here, which I'll call person as before. And let's give this a main method, which I'll just put here for demonstration purposes. Let's give person a single property, which I'll call name. Let's make that a type string. And to make that a property, we have to use valor var here. Now I can create a couple of people. We'll have person one equals person Bob. And let's have person two, who can be called Claire. So as we've seen, we can create init blocks in here. This contains code which will be executed every time we do this, every time we create a new person. And here I'm going to write a print line. Let's put hello, I'm dollar name. It's not usually a good idea to put print lines in init blocks because then it's really annoying. Every time you create an object, you're going to see text coming out, which normally you don't want. But just for demo purposes here, I'll do it. Now there's only one name in scope between these brackets. There's only one valid name here and it is the property. So when we do this, we're going to get the name property coming out. And if we run it, we get the results that we expect. So hello, I'm Bob. Hello, I'm Claire. Now let's output here the variable called this, which is a variable that's available between these brackets. So within this scope, we haven't declared it. It's just automatically available. And I'm also down here going to do print line person one and print line person two. So when we run this, we find that the this reference looks exactly the same as if we'd printed the object externally. In fact, this is a reference to each object that we can use within the class itself. So it's really exactly the same as these. It's just we can use it within the class and it automatically refers to whichever object you've created. Now, one thing we can use references to this person object for, apart from calling methods, is we can refer to properties. This depends on them having what we call public visibility, which we'll look at later on. But by default, properties do have public visibility. So that means we can do person1.name. Notice there are no open and close round brackets after this because it's not a method, it's a property. Let's do the same for person two. If we want to do the same within the actual class itself between these brackets, let's get rid of that. We can do it using this dot name, except this would be interpreted as dollar this and then output the text dot name in that string. So to output this dot name, which is what we want, we've got to surround this by curly brackets. And if we run this, we find we get the same thing, both internally within the class using this dot name and externally using the variable that refers to the object dot name. So if all this seems a bit weird to you, just practice this and you'll soon get the hang of it. It's not that complicated. It just seems complicated because when you first approach this, you have no idea why we would need this special variable called this. That's it for this video. We're going to go on shortly to look at secondary constructors. And until next time, happy coding.